Well, good morning. It is July 28th, 2023. It's hard to believe how quick this month has gone. God is good. God is wonderful. God loves us so much more than we can comprehend or understand. He's so faithful. I pray that if you've never asked Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of your life, that today you make that choice. Let God be your God. He is the only true God. He is the only living God. There is none like Him. He is so far beyond anything that words can say. And he loves us so, so, so very much. We're going to be this morning in Colossians 1. You've tuned in to Matt and Randy in the morning. We are here to encourage you in the word so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. That is where true victory is found is knowing that you are in right standing with God Almighty. Not because anything that you've done, not because of anything that you have, anything that you've given, but because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's real. He, Jesus is alive and well. And he chooses to dwell with us. His love for us is past our understanding. But once you've truly made him Lord of your life, there's no doubt about it. There is no going back once you've tasted of the goodness of God. It is so far beyond anything that words really can explain. Are there going to be moments of doubt? Yes, because we're in this flesh. We, we fight against this flesh, our, our natural things. But in the spirit, you know that you know that you know that he is real. Those moments of doubt may come just for a moment, but then they're gone. Peter, for a little bit, out of fear denied Christ and said I don't know him he even cussed something that he no longer did when he was confronted and they said oh he was with Jesus fear grabbed him and for a little bit he denied but boy then afterwards when he heard that crow the rooster crow like Jesus had said would happen he remembered and he wept and he called out to God and God lovingly, lovingly embraced him so much that Peter was willing to die for his Lord from then on forward. There was no doubt he was not going to deny his Lord again because he knew that he knew that he knew that Jesus was the Savior. Jesus was the Messiah that he had been waiting for. He is the King of Kings. They thought he was going to be ruler of Israel there and people were disappointed because he didn't take his place as King of Israel. But the thing is he's not just King of Israel. He's King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The whole universe is under his <laughs> rulership. He is the one who says what is what. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, the three in one rule everything that is known, everything that is unknown. He spoke this world into existence. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You know, in the natural, it's hard for us to understand a triune God, but by faith we do. And one day we will comprehend. I don't know that we'll ever comprehend fully, but we'll understand a whole lot better when this old flesh of ours is gone and we get taken up in glory and we get our new glorified bodies. Oh, what a day of rejoicing that will be. But 
Let's get into the Word. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we open up and read these scriptures out of Colossians, I ask, Holy Spirit, that you teach us, guide us, instruct us in the ways of righteousness. Give us ears to hear and hearts willing to receive what your Word wants to speak to us today. In Jesus' name, O oh Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the privilege of being able to have your word, O oh Lord, to be able to minister your word. Father, that we may edify one another. In Jesus' name, Lord, thank you. Amen. I'm going to start in verse 9. Colossians 1, starting in verse 9. And I'm actually just going to start right in the middle of it here. This is where I wrote it down. And this is the thought that I had. The first thing that came to my mind is be filled with the, excuse me, be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. We need to be filled with the wisdom of the Lord, with the knowledge of the Lord. This world is always coming up with a new, what's next great idea. You know, Paul is in prison. He's writing to the Colossians. The world has always, Satan always takes things of God and tries to twist it just enough to deceive people. It's like that cup that I talk about, the 99% iced tea but 1% arsenic is still going to kill you. The enemy is subtle. And in these last days there's so much deception out there. It is the most important that we know this word. You have to know the truth. If you don't know the truth, then you won't know what is a lie. Don't worry about studying all the ideas of man. Worry about hiding this word in your heart. Because then, when you read other things, you'll be able to say, okay, that's that's a yes, uh, that's a no. That's contrary to the, I don't care how popular it is. It does not go along with the word of God. So this is what Paul is telling the Colossians, you know, writing this letter. So be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increase in the knowledge of God. That, that is our desire, that as we study this word together, as we do this morning devotion, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, you, me, fully pleasing Him, God Almighty, being fruitful in every good work, and increase in the knowledge of God. The more you do for God, the more you give your life to Him, the more you know God, and the more you realize how little you really know of God, because He is so great. He goes on and says, knowledge of God strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy when you do this the spirit of the Lord comes upon you and it'll give you even though you may be going through hard times you may be going through tribulations you know everybody has different things they're dealing with you'll still be able to have patience and long-suffering with joy the joy of the Lord will still be deep inside of you no matter what situations may be going around around going on around you you will still be able to have that peace of the Lord it says giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the Saints in the light Think about that. Because of what Jesus did, God the Father loved us so much that he sent his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So he qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us, praise God, delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love if you've asked jesus christ to be lord of your life that means god has taken you 
out of darkness and brought you into his light you're going to have an understanding and you're going to see things differently than those in the world and because of that people might make fun of you people might ridicule you thinking oh you're just in a stuck in a hole <laughs> no no we're not we see things from God's point of view once you have the Spirit of God inside of you you're not focused on just this little tiny little earth there's a whole glorious universe out there and our God our Heavenly Father holds it all in proper order it says the kingdom of the Son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins Wow forgiveness of sins it doesn't matter what we've done in the past it doesn't matter if we fall and sin again as long as our heart is toward the Lord and we ask say Lord I am sorry I messed up forgive me and help me to not fall for that trap again the Lord will help you the Spirit of God within you the Holy Spirit if you've asked Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of your life dwells within you and he will give you the power to say no he will give you those strong neck muscles that you need to instead of keep looking at that look the other way don't let your eyes focus on that thing that you know is a trap look the other way cover your ears don't hear the garbage you know the horses when they're running in races they put those blinders so that they can stay focused and not worry about the things that are going on around them we need to do the same thing we need to guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus so I have gone over a minute keep a praise song in your heart rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice see you